With new research tools coming available every single day, it may be hard to figure out what are the tools that you really need to be effective as a researcher. So in this video, I'm going to show you the tech stack that every researcher needs. For each part of the tech stack, I'm gonna have three different levels of software you can use and examples within each of those levels. Level one will always be free tools that meet the base need for that given category. Level two will be a mix of free and paid tools that offer additional features than level one that may help you become a little bit more effective. And then level three is going to include AI or heavy enhancements that can make your work easier if you feel it's necessary. The first part of your tech stack needs to be a way to find literature. So if you are trying to do your research, you're always going to need to be able to figure out what's happening in your field, be able to test your ideas for validity, or even understand your field, or be able to cite different facts within your own research papers or presentations. So you have to be able to find new articles that are coming up in your field. So the level one is going to be your free search engines. These are going to be things like Google Scholar or Semantic Scholar. With these, you're probably gonna to need to be able to develop your own keywords to be able to search, and you may have to go out and find the free PDF somewhere. You're not gonna get a lot of like free summarizations with them, but they, that is exactly what I used when I was in grad school. I mainly just used Google Scholar to be able to find my own literature, and I was able to do my work perfectly fine. Level two includes both free and paid tools, and this is where you get into network analysis. So this is going to be tools like ResearchRabbit, LitMaps, Connected Papers. These are tools that allow you to add in a few different articles or even one article and find the different articles that connect them together. So this could be similar articles, this could be citations or references. So you can start expanding out without having to look through list and list of of articles in just a search engine. Finally, level three is going to be AI search engines and summarizers. So these are things like Elicit, SciSummary, SciSpace, Consensus, or Cite. These tools also implement AI summaries. So you can ask questions of specific papers and get those summaries or get just general summaries of the abstracts or the PDFs from these papers. If you're struggling with how to find research articles or what articles to read or how to create your actual research project plan, then I recommend downloading my 30-day research jumpstart guide. It's an easy way to be able to develop out your plan, read articles, find new ideas, and be able to get a jumpstart on your next research project. Once you have a tool that allows you to find them, you want to be able to organize your research articles effectively so you can always find them in the future. Just downloading a bunch of PDFs and saving them in a folder isn't going to be the most productive way to do this. So I recommend at the very minimum that you have a reference manager. And that's where we're gonna start with level one. Level one is our free reference managers and it includes Zotero and Mendeley as examples. Level two is a paid reference manager. So the main paid reference manager I would recommend is EndNote. And for this, I, you need to pick one of these two from either the free or the paid reference managers. This is gonna be really important in being able to not only organize your materials while you're collecting and finding research papers, but also being able to cite correctly whenever you're writing your research articles. These reference managers allow dynamic citations into things like Word docs or Google docs so that you don't have to worry about the formats. You can easily change from one journal's format to another journal's format, or if you need to rearrange your paper, you can easily change your citations along the way. Now for level three, this is really an organizational system, and this is really an add-on to one of the reference managers you should choose. You absolutely don't need a level three tool, but it can be really helpful if you're struggling with organizing or finding your information. So examples of organization systems include Notion, and I will link below my Notion literature organization template in the description below. You can also use something like LogSeq or Obsidian. Whichever tool really fits your workflow best is one that you should decide. Again, this isn't really a necessary, it's an add-on, um, but at least having a reference manager within this category is really important. 
Now that you have a way to find articles and organize those articles, you need a PDF reader so that you can actually read the article and be able to understand what it is discussing so that you can develop your own ideas or check that information is correct or anything like that. So the level one is going to be free PDF viewers. This includes something like Adobe Acrobat or even Google Chrome, just dragging and dropping the PDF into Google Chrome will allow you to read it. Level two is also free, but it includes PDF annotation. So this could also be Adobe Acrobat, but also something like Zotero, which allows you to search those annotations after the fact. And then our level three is when we're getting into AI PDF summarizers and viewers. These are things like explain paper, SciSpace, SciSummary, or any other AI summarizer. Essentially, these tools allow you to bring up a PDF on one side and allow you to ask questions to that PDF while you're reading it. Maybe it allows you to explain text or figures from that PDF. And this can help you to summarize things faster, to read it faster, but it's really not an essential need for this category. Just being able to read the PDF is perfectly fine. If you want to be more efficient in your work, sometimes using an AI summarizer is going to be faster, you always need to check and correct any information generated by AI. Now we move on to the next area of our tech stack, which is going to be a way to analyze data. Obviously, if you are gathering data within your research, you have to have a way to analyze said data. And so you can have a lot of different ways. And the level one for this tech stack is programming. So this is like using something like R or Python or any other programming language that allows you to analyze the data in the way that you need. Now, R and Python are free to use. They're open source. You can download R Studio and actually work in both R and Python. Or you could use something like Jupyter Notebooks and work in both R and Python as well. This does require that you know the programming language to be able to analyze the data, but it can also be a much faster way of analyzing large amounts of data in the same way, because once you write the code once, you can execute it over and over again with different variables. Level two is going to be data analytics interfaces. So these are things that you don't need to know programming to do. It's clicking around, it's spreadsheets, things like that. So a couple examples here is something like Excel or Google sheets that will allow you to perform some basic statistical testing, get descriptive statistics. And a lot of my work in my early part of grad school was actually done in Excel. So you can definitely do a lot of work within Excel. These could also be things like field specific software. So things like using GraphPad or using something specific to the data that you get would also count within the level two. And then finally, level three is using an AI analyst. For this, my one example is using Julius AI. You could also potentially use chat GPT, even though it isn't specifically fine tuned for this purpose. This is going to help you to be able to just write in normal language and be able to get a readout, especially using Julius AI, you do get that Python code so that you can replicate it or alter it in the way that you need to, to make sure that your data is being accurate. As always, if you are using AI, you definitely need to double check the accuracy of it, which is why I do like something like Julius AI, because it does give you the code and you can run it yourself. You don't have to just trust that the AI did it correctly. The final part of your tech stack is a document and presentation editor. So once you've analyzed your data, you found your research idea, you've organized all of your articles, the next step is really to write your research papers or create your research presentations. The level one is going to be free editors. For this, I would recommend Google Docs, especially because it does have that integration with Zotero or something like Google Slides if you're trying to give a presentation. Level two is going to be the paid editors. These are probably the most common. Um, they're the ones that I used and it's Microsoft Word and Microsoft PowerPoint. There are probably some additional ones that are available, but those are the um, most common that I would say I've seen used, especially because a lot of universities will give you a Microsoft account for being a student. The level three version is a graphics editor. So this is something like Canva, BioRender, or Mind the Graph. This one is another one that it's an add-on. 
uh, you might be able to write your papers in Canva, but it's going to be really hard to deal with the citations in there. But if you need to create specific um, graphics and you want them to look really nice, these are a few different options for you to be able to create nice scientific graphics for your articles. So the complete tech stack that you need is software that will help you find literature, a reference manager or something that will help you organize articles, software to help you read articles, then analyze data, and then to have a document or and presentation editor. You can add in a lot of other different softwares that might help with specific pain points, but this is really the minimal stack that you need to be effective as a researcher. I hope you enjoyed this video and I look forward to seeing you in the next one.